Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. If you're new here, my name is Anushka. So today we're going to be making a Yule log or bouche de Noël, whatever you want to call it. I haven't had one in ages and I feel like the last time I had one was in France. So I'm really excited. I felt like I could never do this, but do you know what? I, I'm filming my intro after doing it and it actually turned out really well. <laughs> if I can say so myself. No, I thoroughly enjoyed making this cake and it's so light and I can't wait to try it, which I'll do in a bit. The recipe that I use is from Cupcake Gemma. Obviously, I love her channel. I always rave about her and I'm not like a professional baker, so I find these videos really helpful and I'll link them in the info box. Now, today's post notification shout out is going to go to Lala Saida Nataj. Thank you so much for your really sweet comment. I really appreciate it. And if you guys want to get one next time, all you have to do is subscribe, press the bell button and then let me know in the comments below when you've done so. Now, my my makeup because I did it like very quick okay <laughs> but I'm also really excited because Skillshare is sponsoring today's video now Skillshare is an online learning platform for creative and curious people like me and you they offer thousands of classes relating to photography design business analytics uh, entrepreneurships even baking guys there's so much on the platform for you to learn from the classes are taught by experts and are usually under an hour long so it can easily fit your time schedule I'm all for learning new things and improving the skills I already have and especially with lockdown coming through guys i know it sucks but this is a great time to learn something new or deepen an existing passion that you may have now the first thousand people to click in the link in my info box will get a free trial of skillshare premium membership so make sure not to miss out on this guys it's a really great offer now what's also really great is that the annual price actually comes to around less than ten dollars a month which is a bargain especially when you're getting taught by professionals who would want to miss out on that honestly a lesson that i really enjoyed was on paste cream and how to make it it's really quick and easy to understand it's by robida's kitchen so definitely check that out guys and honestly it's just a great way to join an online community of people who just want to learn you know so yeah, i'll leave a link in the info box and we'll jump straight into the video <laughs> So the first thing that you're going to need is a 43 by 28 centimeter tin. This I actually got on Amazon and it was really affordable. I'm going to line it with baking paper and you just want to nail the corners with your nail. <laughs> um, and then basically cut into those markings you made like I'm doing right now and making these little kind of like squares. And this is just going to help the paper fit right into the tin although i'm not really great at doing this to be honest i could have done it a bit better but as you can see it fits right in i'm just trimming the edges as well so that's not there's not too much paper hanging out and i'm just gonna butter the tray i know this is such an amazing new buttering technique i found just straight from the slab <laughs> um and when you put your paper on it's just gonna stick right on without cre creating any creases or anything like that just nice and smooth so you're gonna put that to the side and now we're gonna use six egg yolks and 120 grams of caster sugar and we're just gonna wix, wix, <laughs> whisk this through until we get a nice pale thick consistency like this so satisfying I'm using 50 grams of cocoa powder which I'm gonna sieve through I use a spatula just to help it sieve because otherwise it just stays in lumps a pinch of salt and you just want to use your spatula to just mix this all through I like to use more like a folding technique this is gonna turn into a nice thick paste and i'm also going to add in a big dollop of vanilla extract this is from tesco it's really nice because it's kind of sweet as well and just mix this through and you can put this to the side now we need our six egg whites and we're just going to lightly whisk this and once you start seeing some bubbles forming i'm just going to turn the speed right up and just whisk this through until it starts getting kind of thick So once it's looking nice and fluffy, you can add in your caster sugar. I'm slowly adding 30 grams of caster sugar, which will help stabilize um, the egg whites and add a bit of sweetness as well. And you just want to whisk this through until you get nice, soft, stiff peaks. And you should be able to turn the bowl upside down and nothing falls, basically. <laughs> 
just like so just looks like a nice fluffy marshmallowy cloud but so now I'm going to take a large metal spoon that has a nice um, sharp edge I would say and we're going to slowly take bits of the egg whites and fold this through our chocolatey paste. I did this in sections and you really want to use this kind of folding technique so that you don't get rid of any of the air that you've created. I could have used a better spoon but this was literally all that I had. You don't need every single utensil that are in the videos but just use whatever you have that's similar. You should end up with a nice fluffy kind of mixture like this. And we're going to pour this right into our baking tin. How satisfying is that honestly? And just spread this through. Again, another satisfying point in this video. The cake is really, really thin. So it's not going to go into the oven too long. Just make sure it's evenly layered into the tin. And it's going to go in the oven for 10 minutes at 170 degrees Celsius. And I use a fan oven, by the way. Like so, pop it in. So once it's ready... Um, it should look like something like this and once you poke your finger it kind of like bounces back up and that's when you know it's ready so you want to make sure that you carefully peel the cake from the edges of the baking paper you're going to use a towel cloth a kitchen towel i don't know what the hell this is called and ignore my it's ugly but it's the only smooth one i have i, I sprinkled a bit of icing sugar on it and you just want to flip your cake onto it and the cake is still kind of warm I let it cool down for like not even five minutes and slowly take off the baking paper this is speeded through by the way I was really careful with this so now you want to fold the edge of your kitchen towel and put a bit on the edge of the cake and then just slowly go with the flow and fold the cake you really don't need to apply any pressure at all just just roll it that's all like that's the best explanation I can give and you'll see it will just do it on its own and this is going to help the cake keep its shape without ripping or tearing once you're going to unfold it and then put the cream in it just it's like memory foam that's that's how I can explain it <laughs> I was so proud at this moment I was able to do this I was like treating it like a baby stroking it tapping it <laughs> Okay, now we need to make our ganache. I'm using 200 grams of dark chocolate chips, some butter, all the ingredients will be in the info box. And we're gonna put this in the microwave. I put it for like a minute and 30 seconds and it should look like this. Just a nice liquidy consistency. Make sure it's nicely mixed up. And we're gonna also add in some double cream. I think I did a hundred, just 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 above a hundred grams of double cream, and just mix this through. And this is just gonna create such a nice, lovely uh, ganache that doesn't taste too bitter. This is why I love this because the cream kind of balances it out, and it just looks so yummy. I could eat that whole bowl, honestly. Okay, so we're going to put that to the side and let it cool down. We're going to do our filling now and I used 150 grams of double cream again. And just like in the recipe video, I'm going to hand whisk this, although my hand my arm was hurting a lot at the end of it. Uh, so you can use an electric whisk and I put in around a tablespoon and a half of icing sugar just to give it some sweetness and structure and it should look like this basically just a nice thick whipped cream so we're going to unroll our cake because it's nice and cool now so this is where i kind of messed up a bit the cake is perfect there's nothing wrong with it it didn't rip it folded 
beautifully but when I started playing around and trying to flip it like this I basically tore it up look at that I was so frustrated but it was okay it was salvageable it didn't rip too much so I put on um, the the whipped cream all over the cake and I'm just spreading it through again another satisfying moment I just love baking videos guys <laughs> Just make sure you get it all evenly coated and just a little bit into that fold right here not too much in that bit and you're gonna use your kitchen towel to help you fold it right back up but make sure you don't fold the towel into the cake because i feel like i would do that but yeah just use it as a guide or just to help you support the cake and again you really don't need to put any pressure at all just lightly fold it and it just should do it on its own because it's already got the fold in the cake and look at that that's my little yule log my first ever yule log came out so beautiful so I'm going to transfer this onto a cutting board or a plate or whatever you have at home. And now we're going to put on the ganache, although here it's kind of thick. You can use it like this if you want. You could use it just like that, but we're going to whip this, which creates a nice fluffy ganache. And it goes lighter as well, but it's so yummy. It makes it even thicker as well. So we're going to put this all over the cake. And I have this little baby spatula that I love using, I got from Amazon, I'll link it in the info box, but I'm just going to spread this out evenly. Um, and also I uh, created some lines just to kind of imitate that log wood effect. I tried to do those circly things but it wasn't that great, but you know what, it just looks rustic and authentic, you know. <laughs> and I dusted on some icing sugar which really gave the effect of like this Christmassy Yule log, I just love it so much guys. And then I took some leaves from my mum's plant. I know, so random, but I didn't have like proper decorations. And I also found out, found this dried up rose from this plant that was in the kitchen. Um, that looked like this, but it's kind of cute. So I put it there and it added the, the cutest touch to the cake. And there we go, guys. That's my little Yule log. I'm so proud of it. Uh, honestly, honestly, I'm not going to lie. This is so good guys this is my bouche de noel okay let's see if this cuts well i am so proud of myself oh my god oh my god i need to take a photo of this my camera battery has run out but we're going to use my phone because it's not too bad but let's see how Okay, let's give this a go. That is so light, so fluffy, like the perfect Yule Log cake. I'm literally just going to demolish this whole piece. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what I should make next. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And also don't forget to check out the Skillshare link in the info box if you guys want to try it out. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Love you guys.